Hi, everybody. It's Professor Mitchell, and today we are starting a brand new chapter, Chapter 8 on Techniques of Integration. So this first section, 8.1, uh, I just realized I don't have a title slide for the section, but it's basically just review of uh, integration techniques that we already know, uh, of which there are not very many. You know a bunch of formulas, most of the ones that you're looking at here. Uh, if you're one of my students, we did not go over formulas uh, 21 and 22 uh, because we skipped that section, but everything else on here you saw either in Calc 1 or earlier this semester. And of course, you know about integration by substitution, but so far, those are really the only uh, integration tricks you, you know. So throughout this chapter, we're going to be adding to that list. You're going to learn a whole bunch more integration tricks. Uh, but this section, 8.1, is really just review. So the first thing I want to tell you is that if you are one of my students, uh, I am planning to make this slide that you're looking at into a handout in case you'd like to print it and uh, keep it for reference. And then you've heard me mention in previous videos something that I call baby U substitution. Baby U substitution is a Mitchell term, uh, and it refers to a very specific uh, integration shortcut. And uh, he here is how I would sort of formally state it. If the integral of f of x with respect to x is equal to capital F of x plus c, in other words, capital F of X is an antiderivative for little f of X, uh, and A does not equal zero, then the integral of F at A times X with respect to X is one over A times capital F at AX plus C. So let me show you an example of what I'm talking about because that looks kind of uh, technical. get over to my tablet here. So the, uh, the example that I was planning to use is integral sine 4x dx. Now, whenever an integral like this came up um, throughout chapter seven, for example, I actually wrote out the substitution, let u equal 4x, then du is equal to four times dx. Um, but now I think this is the perfect time for me to officially show you baby U substitution. And then whenever an integral like that comes up in the future, I'm gonna uh, do it very fast. So the idea behind baby U substitution is that uh, the antiderivative for sine is negative cosine. So you can just say that this is negative cosine. Uh, actually, let me... I'm going to put this negative sign over here. Negative cosine of 4x. So um, baby u substitution is kind of like a reverse chain rule. The idea is that if you differentiated cosine 4x, a 4 would pop out. Well, when you're integrating, you just make that a 1 fourth. And that's it. So the integral of sine 4x with respect to x is negative 1 fourth cosine 4x plus c. Uh, if you want to convince yourself that that's correct, well, then just go ahead and write out the, the regular um, you know, u substitution. But please just know that from now on, whenever I run into this kind of integral, uh, I am just going to use the shortcut, and I will always refer to baby U substitution whenever I do that. All right, so now I've selected a few examples uh, from this section that I'll show you. Again, there are no new integration tricks in this section. Uh, it's just kind of a hodgepodge of all different kinds of things that we've technically already gone over. Now, that doesn't mean uh, that as you work through these problems, you might not, you know, discover something that you don't remember doing or, or possibly maybe even never did. You know, there's always 
uh, little gaps here and there. And that's fine. That's part of the reason we do this review section. So the examples I've chosen are the ones that you see here. And I'm gonna go over to my tablet. And I just wanna mention before I forget, so you know, I could, do, I could do many more examples from this section and you might find yourself uh, wishing that I would, but you know, I wanna give you the opportunity to try them first. And you know that if you're one of my students, there are all different ways to uh, reach out for help. So I won't get into all of those right now. You know what they are. Uh, you know, so please use those if you struggle with any of these. All right, so the first example, which might actually be the trickiest one on this list, is integral one over one minus secant t with respect to t. So I thought about how to do this. And it's funny because um, I would have done this problem before the last time I taught Calc 2. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I remembered exactly how I did it. Uh, but the first trick that occurred to me was to use some sort of conjugate trick. And what I mean by that is let's multiply the top and the bottom by one plus secant t. Now, why am I doing that? Well, this is a trick that often works with uh, trig functions because when you multiply by the conjugate upstairs, I'm going to get one plus secant t. And downstairs, I'm going to get one minus secant squared t. Now the hope is when you see that one minus secant squared t, you start to wonder, is that an identity? And the answer, or if you had asked me, you know, the first time I did this problem, uh, I would have told you, well, I don't know, I hope so. I think I remember mentioning this once before. So hopefully you remember that there is a Pythagorean identity that talks about secant squared t. And uh, you may remember me mentioning, or maybe not, I only did it once, I think, um, that I don't walk around with that identity in my head all the time. I don't know, I just don't have room for it, or I can't remember it or something. Every single time I need that identity, I derive it from sine squared t plus cosine squared t equals one. I remember many years ago, I was telling a class about this and, and a student walked up to me at the end of class and I'm probably exaggerating here a little bit, but he just came off like I had changed his life or something by showing him this because I guess he had struggled to um, remember this identity. So if I want to get a secant squared uh, T in here, I wish I had left more room over here. I need to divide everybody by cosine squared t. So that's going to create my secant squared t over there. So divide everybody by cosine squared t. And what I end up with is tangent squared t plus one equals secant squared t. All right. And remember, I want to know if there's an identity for one minus secant squared t. Well, if I subtract one on both sides of this, I get something very close. I get tangent squared t equals secant squared t minus one. All right, I wanted one minus secant squared t. I got secant squared t minus one. Well, those two are just opposites of each other, aren't they? So if tangent squared t equals secant squared t minus one, then one minus secant squared t is negative tangent squared t. So I am going to replace uh, one minus secant squared t with negative tangent squared t. And here I have one plus secant t. All right. So far, so good. 
So now I am going to break that into two separate integrals. Let's box this off so it doesn't get mixed up. All right, so we're gonna have negative one over tangent squared T minus integral secant T over tangent squared T, dt. Uh, and I need a dt over here also. <laughs> okay, so I am going to write one over tangent squared T as cotangent squared T. And then, Hopefully this is a familiar trick to you from uh, trig and pre-calc. Whenever you don't know what else to do with secants, cosecants, tangents, cotangents, try writing them in terms of sine and cosine. So I'm gonna take uh, this thing and write it as one over cosine T over sine squared T over cosine squared T. Did it again. All right. And I promise this is going somewhere. So now let me, um, oh, let me copy that over, I guess. So we have negative integral cotangent squared T dt minus, so let me do this. Instead of dividing by sine squared T over cosine squared T, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So that's going to give me one over cosine t times cosine squared t over sine squared t. All right. So cotangent squared t, the integral cotangent squared t, is one that may or may not have come up for you in Calc 1. Uh, but that's another one that you do using a um, Pythagorean identity. All right. And once again, uh, because I honestly don't know, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to try to remember what is the identity that involves cotangent squared T. Starting with sine squared T plus cosine squared T equals one. If I want to work a cotangent in there, then that has to be divided by sine squared t, and so does everybody else. All right, so that gives me one plus cotangent squared t equals cosecant squared t. In other words, I should replace cotangent squared t with cosecant squared t minus one. All right, and hopefully you'll understand why it's helpful to make that replacement. It's because I know the integral of cotangent squared T, All right? That's one that's on my list. Minus one here. And then if I go ahead and pretty this up, uh, we can get rid of one of these with this, and that is going to leave me with integral cosine t over sine squared t. All right, here we go, we're almost there. Okay, so the integral of cosecant squared t is almost like doing the integral of secant squared t. The integral of secant squared t is tangent t, the integral of cosecant squared t is negative cotangent t. All right, so that's going, let's just do this. So we got the negative outside and then I've got a negative here. And then of course the integral of minus one is minus t. And we'll clean that up later. Now, what integration trick do you suppose I should use for integral cosine t over sine squared t? Well, that's just going to be a substitution. Look what happens if I let u equal sine t, 
then du becomes cosine t dt. And that is perfect. So this is going to be minus integral du over u squared, which is definitely a calc one integral. So we have cotangent t plus t, and then the integral of u to the negative two du by the backwards power rule, which I happen to notice on your list of integration formulas was number two. Uh, that integral is equal to u to the negative one over negative one. But it's not about u. All right, what was u in terms of t? U was uh, sine t, right? So this is going to end up being one over sine t. In other words, cosecant t. And don't forget the plus c or else no points. Just kidding. All right. By the way, I thought it might be worth mentioning. So I was kind of curious how a certain uh, website would uh, do this integral. So I plugged it in there and it did it a completely different way. Uh, it did it a way that I never would have thought of. So just keep in mind, you know, those websites are out there and they're great for checking your answers. Uh, but they are not a substitute for doing the problem yourself, because I have to tell you, if I saw anybody do this particular problem the way that the website would di did it, I would probably ask you to explain it to me in a little bit more detail, because, you know, you're not supposed to be letting the website do your work for you, right? So hopefully you understand what I'm saying there. All right, again, probably the hardest problem on the list just happened to be first. That's, I think, the order that they appeared in the textbook. All right, well, this one's a little better. Integral one over the square root of two theta minus theta squared with respect to theta. We did a problem kind of like this back in a certain section of chapter seven. Hopefully this problem reminds you a little bit of your inverse trig integrals. All right. Um, and this is one of those where you have to complete the square. Okay. So let me um, go off to the side and talk about two theta minus theta squared. I'm gonna have to complete the square on that. So first of all, two theta minus theta squared is the opposite of theta squared minus two theta. And now that's the thing that I have to complete the square on. So you remember how that works? You take the linear coefficient, which is a negative two. Negative two divided by two is negative one. The square of negative one is one. So in order to make this a perfect square, I need a plus one inside those parentheses. Now I'm gonna do something uh, that might make you scratch your head for just a second. Remember that you can't just go around adding one to an expression because that gives you a new expression. You have to make up for it somehow. Well, I claim that the way you make up for it is to put a plus one over here. But Mitchell, why is it a plus one? Why isn't it a minus one? Well, it's because of this minus sign out here, right? That minus sign outside really makes this plus one, it's actually a minus one. So putting a plus one all the way out here, uh, makes up for that, it balances it out. Okay, so what this is telling me is that I should replace two theta minus theta squared 
with one minus the quantity theta squared minus two theta plus one, which is one minus the square of theta minus one. All right, and now the problem becomes very easy. This is integral d theta over the square root of one minus the square of theta minus one. If you really wanted to, you could write this up as a substitution, but it's really not necessary. Um, so this is going to be, and I'm sorry to say, I don't have, wait, you know what? Yes, I do. Give me just a second. I was gonna say, I don't have that list of formulas in front of me, but it just so happens I have my textbook within reach. Okay, so if you've got the list of formulas in front of you, I am going to be using formula number 18. And that's the one that talks about the, uh, the, um, the inverse sine integral. Uh, so this is just going to be the inverse sine of theta minus one plus C. That's it. By formula number 18. Again, you could write it up as a substitution. You could let U equal theta minus one. Uh, but then du would just be d theta, all right? So there's really no point. It's, it's kind of like a baby u substitution, I guess. All right, that's the end of it, all right? I think that one was definitely a lot easier than letter A. And then we come to this one. So this is a trick that uh, you should definitely know. We are going to be doing more integrals that kind of look like this when we get to the section on um, partial fractions, integration by partial fractions. In the meantime, what I need to tell you about uh, integrating a polynomial over a polynomial is check the degrees of the two polynomials and if the uh, degree upstairs is not strictly less than the degree downstairs, then you need to start with everybody's favorite thing, which is polynomial long division, all right? Uh, so this is degree three. This is degree one. Since, Degree three is greater than or equal to degree one. Start with long division. All right, you remember doing that in uh, pre-calc, for example. Two theta minus five into two theta cubed minus seven theta squared. I think it's kind of funny they chose theta for this variable, but whatever. Okay, here we go. Two theta into two theta cubed goes theta squared. Uh, and by the way, I have a um, pre-calc video on polynomial long division. If you would like me to make that available to you, just ask and I'll uh, show you where it is. Theta squared times two theta is two theta cubed. Theta squared times minus five is minus five theta squared. Subtract the whole thing. Uh, those two cancel. Negative seven theta squared plus five theta squared is negative two theta squared. Bring down seven theta. And lather, rinse, repeat. Two theta into negative two theta squared is minus theta. Minus theta times two theta is minus two theta squared. Minus theta times minus five is plus five theta. Subtract the whole thing. Those two cancel. Seven theta minus five theta is two theta. Uh, and you know what? Since I'm missing a constant term in my dividend, let me just stick a plus zero here. 
might help me keep track of things. And I have to do one more go with the uh, long division. So two theta into two theta goes one time. One times two theta is two theta. One times minus five is minus five. Subtract the whole thing. And the remainder is five. So what does that mean? It means that integral two theta cubed minus seven theta squared plus seven theta, I hope I have my signs right, over two theta minus five should be rewritten as my quotient, which is theta squared minus theta plus one, plus my remainder over my divisor. My remainder was five, right? So this is gonna be plus five over two theta minus five. All right. So look at that for a second, and hopefully you can agree that that is a, a much simpler integral. The first three terms are just uh, like the first day of integration in Calc 1. So the integral of theta squared is theta cubed over 3. Integral theta is theta squared over 2. Integral of 1 is theta. Okay, now five over two theta minus five, that is not a calc one integral, that is a calc two integral. That is an early chapter seven integral. Uh, and it is actually an example of baby u substitution. So uh, the way I'm going to do this is first of all, I'm just going to put the five there. And then uh, if this was one over two theta minus five, I would just do natural log absolute value two theta minus five. But then to make up for the two in two theta minus five, I need a one half. So I'm just gonna put that here and don't forget the plus C and that's it. Again, if, you, if I lost you right here, it is a baby U sub Try writing it out, starting with let u equal two theta minus five. All right, so once again, I could do many more examples from this section, but I, I picked those three because I think they cover a broad range of tricks. Uh, there will be other tricks that come up in the homework. Um, and again, if you're one of my students, you know all the different ways to reach out for help. So that's going to do it for section 8.1 and we'll see you next time.